tool made, so I'm going to get the shaft out now. So today, I've got to take a swing arm out, rip the paint off it, take the bearings out. Let's see how far down that list of stuff we get. Okay, this could be a bit of a mess. This is factory original coating, so I don't know how easy that is when we get it off, but I'm going to use the fleece to grind that off and a lot of cleaning up to do and afterwards possibly even some more parts to order it depends what I have and haven't realised right back at the beginning two years ago because that's when I ordered all the parts for this. So here we are, let's get stuck in, wish me luck, welcome back. Right, at this point it's worth mentioning that it is actually quite challenging getting a bike jacked up safely in order to take the swing arm out because we often rely, we usually rely on the swing arm to be the thing that we lift the rear with and as I'm taking it out that's not available to me and in the absence of a sky hook then I'm going to have to think of something else. Now obviously jacking under the sump is always a bad idea because they're fragile, it's only thin cast aluminium and it's quite easy to fracture it or do damage to it. Um, also you can't jack on the exhaust don't even need to say that do I? So you really got to find something else. So taking all this out of the way has given me lots and lots of options now. I've got a couple of axle stands and as you can see here, taking off this side stand, remember the side stand is the thing upon which the factory relied on to hold the weight of the bike, so that must be beef and that's the area that I'm going to go for. It's a solid cast, big fat casting there. Um, it's threaded all the way through. The thread goes in there about an inch, so that's at least an inch thick solid cast alloy and it is part of this casting for the frame. So I think that's reliable enough. I can bring the axle stand in under there and I can come up under there nicely once I've jacked it up a bit to get the weight off the paddock stand. And the same goes for the other side. The other end of this just pokes out enough to get an axle stand under. Naturally, always, whenever you're doing this kind of daftness, strap it down you know, health and safety, look after yourself, especially if you're on your own in the garage. Other little things, someone else said the other day, another little thing, phone in your pocket, right? If you're gonna end up with this coming down on you and you're trapped underneath it and your phone is five feet away, your little common sense things like that, phone in your pocket so that you've got half a chance of getting help if you're on your own working in your garage. So there you go, a little bit of rubbish for it. So there we are, I'm gonna get this jacked up and supported underneath there, I think that's the safest way to do it then I can start getting this back end dismantled. As for jacking it up right now, I can just use anything to jack the back up to get it up, probably the axle I think is probably a safe way, just so I can get this up enough to get it clear and get the stands propped up. Let's get on with it, stop talking. I want to say thanks at this point, if I can, just to one of you called Traxol, a YouTuber by the name of Traxol, suggested on the comments recently that if you want to 
support the bike like this and get it up so you can get the swing arm out or whatever, uh, a good way to do it is to take the foot pegs, which bend that way naturally, and invert them, turn them upside down so that they become they bend downwards but are solid that way, and you can put the axles down under there. Well, that would work, but on this particular bike in the back here, there's a single-sided keyway, so they don't go any other way up than that. They only go that way. But if your foot pegs can be spun over so that they face downwards, you can effectively put your axle stands under them, preferably towards the inside where they're going to be stronger. Obviously, if they're right on the outside, these are aluminium as well, so be careful of that. Depends how heavy your bike is. If you've got a Rocket 3, perhaps don't do that. But if you've got a lightweight sports bike and they're solid foot pegs, then perhaps that's an option to you. So Traxol, thank you for your suggestion. Sadly, on this particular bike, it doesn't work because they only go that way up. But cool, that's why I love YouTube. Suggestions abound. So there we are, now ready to pull the shaft out, pull the swing arm out, let's get on with it.
Right, there we go, all done. Four hours of that to get it out, get it cleaned and ready to go. Two more jobs on it now, obviously change the bearings and then paint it. Now painting it's gonna be a long-winded process, we're gonna do the bearings next while it's in reasonably bare metal and I can then degrease it, get all my greasy handprints off after changing the bearings, that's the main point. The bearings are gonna be a standalone separate video, I'm gonna do it on its own because people looking for a swing on bearing change video are not gonna to wanna to watch all the project stuff as well. Also, I don't want the video getting lost in the project series in years to come. I want it to be a standalone video in the simple skills and it'll also be part of the project at the same time. So, swing on bearing change next. There are three bearings in there to change. Here's the pack. Got the slinky glide ones from Wimoto. I'm sure you've all seen these. There are three needle roller bearings inside that tube and a sealed bearing on the end. Looks a bit like a wheel bearing and then two rubber seals. So there's a little bit to do on it. It's not difficult, not complex, any of it. I'll show you it in a single standalone video, like I said, and that'll be the sort of video that will get 100,000 hits in years to come. People will just keep using it, be a great reference video, which is why I'm splitting it here and I'll do that separately on its own. Once the bearings are in, I can mask them off, completely sealed, and then I can paint the thing, simple as that. Painting it is gonna be a reasonably long process because obviously the amount of chain lube and grease and stuff that's on this over all the years, I've no way of knowing I've got all that off. Even though I can't see any, can't feel any, you just don't know. And the only way to really tell is to let the paint tell you. So I'm gonna do a test coat of primer. Just put a coat of silver or primer or something, any, doesn't really matter, whatever it is, put a coat of etched primer over it first. Then you put a test paint over the top and let it dry. Now if it's going to be any, any grease or foreign matter in there whatsoever, it will react with the paint and then you know. And you can spot deal with it, rub it off, sand it back, degrease, spot prime, resand, and get it good. Then once you know you've got an all over coat of paint that isn't going to react, it's absolutely grease free underneath, you've guaranteed it by testing it, then you can go and chuck four pound, three or four cans of paint at it to make a nice finish. You don't want to be putting all your top coat on and finding out you've got to do it again. So there we are, test paint first and then final paint after, so it'll be quite a process and it'll take about two weeks to dry and then I can paint all of the back of this, paint the back of the frame and then put it back in. So that's that done. And then I can put the wheel in because the wheel is now painted. The wheel bearings will be done once the tyres are on because when the tyres are on, I can stand the wheels on the bench with the tyres touching rather than the rims. It's just a safer way to do it. it makes it a little bit easier, you're not going to scratch the paint up done. So there we are, that's enough chat. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time. Bear and change.